Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of CubeTube, episode 5. Um, today I sound a little bit different because I have uh, a little bit of a cold, a little bit under the weather, but uh, that doesn't prevent me from uh, creating this video. So, today we're going to talk about element number 117, which is called Tennessee, and it also rhymes. Um, Tennessee is a, unfortunately, a very boring element, so let's take a look at it of why it is that boring. Well, it is boring because it's actually not in the queue. Now that's a disappointment because I promised to actually collect all the elements, but then why is there this cube and why is there a placeholder in there? As you can see, it's just there, there is nothing in there. There is this radioactive symbol, which, which tells something about this element. Let's, um, let's write some stuff down about uh, Tennessee. There we go. So we got um, element 117, which is the four last uh, element of the periodic system, Ts. And it has a approximate mass of 294. And this is an approximate mass because this element uh, does not occur in nature. Now, what does that mean? I mean, let's, let's go through the characteristics first. So, first of all, they send me a cube with a placeholder. And second of all, I'm telling you guys that this doesn't even occur in, in, uh, in nature. So, what, what the hell is going on here? Well, this is an element that is created by men. It's uh, an element with 117 protons and 117 electrons. It occurred a few times in a lab where they created the isotopes 390, uh, 293 and 294. The atomic mass is 294. And if we could actually make it big enough for the bare eye to see, it would probably be a solid. The melting point is likely between 350 and 500 degrees Celsius. And, yeah, why was it only created by us and why do men do this? Well, we try to create, uh, we try to build a picture of the universe and that also means that you create stuff that could have a purpose in the future. Now, what is the use of creating something like this? Well, it's, it's science. Um, it's, it's trying to figure out how the universe works. Um, it was uncovered in 2010 at the Flerov Institute in Dubna, Russia, together with US uh, nuclear physicists. And in 2016, it got its name and recognition. So it's a very young element. Um, it has no purpose at this time because we cannot make it stable. It exists for, well, the isotope 293 exists for 14 milliseconds. So poof, and it's gone. And the 294 isotope basically exists for 78 milliseconds. So again, poof, and it's gone. And what does that mean? It means that this element, yeah, well, it, since it is so short-lived, they cannot put it in a, in a cube. So this is why I'm getting a placeholder from Engineered Labs, which is, which is fine. I'm going to put this away now. Now, there is not so much to be told about this, this element. Uh, it's named after the state of Tennessee. Um, it's a halogen because it's in the seventh group. Uh, you can see here the seventh group. And because there is so little purpose for this, this element, I decided to talk a little bit about um, the structure of the atom and why halogenes by itself, so the seventh group of the periodic system, is a special group. And together with group one, um, group seven really likes to bond. Now, why is that? Now, to understand that, we have to take a look at this. Now, in the seventh group, we also see um, uh, uh, other halogenes. And halogenes basically means salt maker. It's, it's, it comes from Greek. And the other elements from group sevens are, for instance, fluorine and, uh, sorry, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, iodine, uh, they are also from, from that group. Um, so, so let's explain a little bit. So what we got here is 
a model of the atom. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Here we go. Now, what do we got here? We got here the nucleus. And I already explained that the nucleus is created out of protons and neutrons. Now, when I'm saying, uh, when I'm talking about isotopes that are unstable, what I mean is that they basically, they fall apart. They fall apart within, in this case, 14 milliseconds. So you keep it stable for 14 milliseconds and boom, it will decay in something, in a different uh, different type of uh, different type of, uh, of elements. Um, now, also, you see these electron configurations, right? So you see these, these shells around here. And these shells basically tell you how many electrons are in a specific shell. Now, normally these things are formed, uh, these electrons are in clouds and they, you can really pinpoint them in a specific, in a specific uh, place. Uh, why that is, I can explain in a later, at a later moment. But right now, what you can see is that you can just um, see them at a, at a specific place. Now, let's picture them shelves like this. You have a sh uh, if you go to the periodic system, the first element you will encounter is hydrogen. And the second one that you will encounter is helium. Now, hydrogen, since it is the first element, it will have one electron, right? And helium will have two electrons. Now, what happens if you if you look at the first shell? You can see that it basically has two, two electrons. Now, the second shell, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Now, if you look here and you count the second row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm, that's a coincidence. Now you can, now if you picture, and, and I'm using an analogy here, um, if you picture these shells as shelves in a, in a bookcase, you can, you can use the following analogy. I like my bookcases filled with books, which basically means that I would be the most happy person if all my books, or all my bookcases were filled with books. I don't like it when I have books too many and I don't have bookshelves. I also don't like it when it's not fully filled because then I have empty space and I don't like that. Well, electrons or atoms basically feel the same way. Elements feel the same way. So you have elements like hydrogen and they have one electron, right? But you also have other elements here that are almost have a full shell. So these, this group here, group eight, they all have full shells. And if you have a full shelf, you're happy. If you have a full shell of electron, you're also happy. Those elements don't interact with other elements as well uh, so much. Why? Because they're, they're, they're full, they're happy. Now, these elements here in group seven, they are almost there. And they would do anything to get an electron and fill their, so to say, bookshelf or their electron shelf to get to that perfect configuration and be um, almost like a, like a noble gas. Here you have a group, which is group one, and they all have one electron for spare because basically you have perfect stage, yeah, group eight here, and they have one electron extra. Well, like, you having a bookcase where you have one book too much, and you're going to check out like, hey, is there a book that I can maybe switch or take out so I can, I can go to this state again? Well, the elements work like that as well. They just search for another element that maybe wants to have that electron from them. And this is why they like to bond together these two, these two rows, so group seven and group one. Now, I already explained that, that in, in group seven, you have things like, like fluorine and chlorine and bromine and, and iodine. Now chlorine, you may know from sodium chloride and sodium chloride is nothing more than table salt. And table salt is something very, very stable. Well, sodium is in the first group and chlorine is in the seventh group. And this is why I like to combine together. Now, the other thing you have to realize is that in the first group, and in the seventh group, those two elements are very reactive because these guys want to get rid of their electron and these guys want to take that electron as soon as they can. 
So I hope with this analogy of the of the bookshelves and, and, and about the electron configuration, you get a little bit of an understanding on why certain things react with other things and, and why that is. Um, that was basically the extra story that I wanted to tell today uh, because there was not much to tell about um, that lovely element of tennessine. However, it is an element in the periodic system. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you have questions, by all means, uh, ask them in the comments. Um, subscribe if you like and uh, see you next week.